No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? 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 All right. Four hundred and one years ago, they brought Africans across the Atlantic and the African slave trade. They call the Atlantic slave trade. What they don't tell our children is that many died in the passage across the Atlantic. And on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean lays the bones of those that suffered pandemics on the way. Only those that could survive the viruses, the storms, the waves, the illnesses made it. And when they got to these shores were enslaved for over 250 years. Why do I start by saying that? Because I want people to understand that the strongest Africans are the ones that made it. And therefore, we are the heirs and children of the strongest. You are not dealing with people that don't have strength. You're not dealing with people that don't have backbone. It's going to take more than a lot of threats and backbiting and crooked criminal justice system to stop us. They put our forefathers on blocks and sold us like a bar of soap, but we never stopped fighting. They took our names to where we don't even know our names. We're named after those that owned our forefathers. But even nameless, we never stopped fighting. They sold mama to one state, daddy to another, children to another, and we never stopped fighting. And in their greed, they began fighting each other. Let me tell you what Juneteenth represents. When the Confederates tried to overtake this country and committed treason, when you see those of us talking about take down the statues, can you imagine any country in the world that puts up statues and worships people that were traitors and committed treason to that country? If you would put traitor statues up in front of courthouses, no wonder we can't get justice in the courthouse. If you would put traitor statues in front of state legislative buildings, no wonder the laws are crooked. You worship those that tried to bring your government down. And when the Confederates got north all the way to Virginia, Frederick Douglass and others had been saying, let blacks free. Let them join the Union Army. Lincoln would not hear it. But when they got as close as Virginia, the general said, Mr. Lincoln, free the slaves in those Confederate states. Let them join the Union. And they joined the Union and backed the Confederates up. They tell our children and others, that Lincoln freed the slaves. The fact is the slaves freed Lincoln. If we hadn't joined the Union Army, Stonewall Jackson might have been the president. So we backed up the Union Army and Lincoln signed at the end of the victory of the Civil War for the Union, the Emancipation Proclamation. And when he signed it, he committed that on January 1st, 1863, slaves would be free. Well, a lot of folk that go to black churches and go to watch night service on New Year's Eve don't understand that's not a night 
to pray till midnight and go party after. Watch night was that we watched to see the clock strike 12 to know that we are free. That what watch night was. But somehow they didn't get that message to Texas. There wasn't Twitter then. Wasn't Facebook then. And people in Texas continued the slave or the enslavement of blacks for another two and a half years. Finally, a general came in and announced the union had won, the slaves was free. That became known as Juneteenth. So we celebrate the day, and all this country, of those that are humane and those that are committed to decency, should celebrate because Juneteenth represented the first day in this country that you did not have legalized slavery. When members of the Senate proposed making a federal holiday out of Juneteenth today, it ought to be a federal holiday because it's the first day this country stepped toward living up to the model that it had announced that all men were created equal. Don't forget that most of them that wrote that owned slaves. Most of them that wrote that didn't even respect their own women. Women couldn't vote to 1920. That's why I'm a little puzzled when I hear people walking around talking about make America great again. Give me the date that America was great for everybody. It wasn't great for blacks when we were enslaved and then had to fight Jim Crow and then fight for the right to vote. It wasn't great for white women who couldn't even vote and was reduced to you stay in the kitchen. It wasn't great for those of Latino and Asian descent who were not welcomed here even though you had a statue in the harbor saying bring me your tired and huddled masses that yearn to be free. When was America great? For everybody. We are the ones, you that are marching in Selma, you that are marching all over America, we're the ones that will make America great for everybody for the first time. You can't be great when you can shoot people down like you did Terrence Crutcher and let the officer be acquitted and go to another county and serve in law enforcement. Ain't nothing great about that. You can't be great when you come and shoot a man jogging down the road in Brunswick, Georgia, and you corn him off and kill him in cold blood. That is not great. It's not great when a woman in her own house sleep with her boyfriend and you use a no-knock law and break in the house and the man tries to defend his woman with a legal weapon, and you claim to believe in amendment too, but you don't believe in it for him. Where are the second amendment people defending that brother in Louisville, Kentucky? You can't be great when you handcuff a man, and even handcuff, thrown to the ground over $20, and put your neck, put his neck down, your knee on his neck, and hold it there, and hold it till his body's limp, and you're full of such venom and hate that you keep your knee on the neck of a man that could not get up and couldn't breathe. That is not greatness. Greatness is when blacks and whites and Latinos and Asians and original Americans 
hit the streets all over this country and march against your tear gas and march against your rubber bullets and march against a military occupation you threaten and march anyhow. That's what will make America great. I read this morning the president talking about warning lowlifes. Well, it's lowlifes that shoot unarmed people, Mr. President. It's lowlifes that has prosecutors that don't prosecute the law, but look out for their friends. You couldn't be talking about us because we fought for the country when it wouldn't fight for us. You couldn't be talking about us because we went to foreign shores and fought wars where those we fought could come and check in hotels that we couldn't and eat in restaurants that we couldn't and we still stood for America. You don't know what greatness is. Look over here in Greenwood tonight. This is what is great about America. We have every fight we've had to fight since that day of Juneteenth. Right after Juneteenth came the era of terrorism, Ku Klux Klan. But what really got us turned around was not just the guys in the white robes, but those in the black robes that sat on the Supreme Court and said that there was no rights that a black had that was bound to be respected. We fought through the era of terrorism and lynchings. We fought into the early 1900s, 1908. Met in Niagara Falls, the Niagara Movement became the NACP, fought lynching. All the way up to the 20s and 30s, fought for women's right to vote. All the way up to the 54, Brown versus Board of Education where it for the first time said separate but is not equal. And I'm the first member in my family to be born at a time that we had equal rights to education. We ain't talking about 100 years ago, we're talking about my life. We fought against public accommodations when a, a simple unnamed black woman that was diminutive in her bearing sat down in the front of the bus in Montgomery and refused to give up her seat. And when they arrested her, people stood up for over a year and boycotted, saying it's better to walk in dignity than to ride in shame. It took nine years to get the Civil Rights Act, but we never gave up. We went from there to the Voting Rights Act, and we never gave up. So I come to Tulsa to tell you, you don't know who we are. We are the people that never give up. Do what you want to do. We won't bend, we won't bow, we won't give up. We fought harder battles than this. We gonna fight this battle. We gonna bring justice to this country no matter how long it takes. That's why we're here. That's why we're going to stay here. That's why we can't turn around. Because it's in our blood. It's in our genes. That we don't give our seats up no more. We are not slaves no more. They leveled the Black Wall Street here in Greenwood. But we built businesses back. And we're going to build them right back here in Greenwood. Truth crushed to earth shall rise again. We will not turn around. The president said he was coming on June 19. Didn't know it was Juneteenth Day. Well, let me say something. He was born and raised in New York, where two thirds of New York is black and Latino. So if you didn't know about Juneteenth, 
it was because you were so insensitive and isolated. If you did know you were lying, either way, you're not qualified as someone culturally deficient to address this country as a head of state. Now he's going to talk a lot of stuff. He's going to say that I gave blacks a lower unemployment number. That was Barack Obama that cut down black unemployment. You just rode the wave. He's going to say he gave a second chance program. It was Obama that commuted more sentences than 11 presidents before him. You just rode the wave. Why don't you come and talk about your proposals to stop police misconduct? You signed an executive order that does not penalize police. Talking about we'll give you an incentive to stop chokeholds. No, give a federal law to say if you use the chokehold, it's against federal law and you'll go to jail. That's an executive order. Give an executive order saying you ought to live in the city that you're policing in. Give an executive order that stops this immunity where you're not liable for what you do. Don't give us a toothless, worthless executive order. Come here to Tulsa tomorrow night and announce something concrete. Or don't say anything at all. Many of you know my surrogate father, Father's Day is Sunday. My surrogate father was James Brown, the godfather of soul. And James Brown had a song that is the theme to me of the Trump administration. It's like a dull knife that just won't cut it, talking loud and saying nothing. So I come to join the Crutcher family to say we may have lost one battle, but the war is not over. We may have had one setback, but we've had setbacks before. We're going to fight to the Terrence Crutchers of this world get justice. We're going to fight to the George Floyds of this world get justice. We're going to fight to the Breonna Taylors of this world get justice. We're going to fight to the Brookses of this world, get justice. We are not tired. The only thing we're tired of is this corrupt criminal justice system that won't be fair. <laughs> Reporters ask me, how long do you think y'all will march? No, the question is how long are y'all going to keep letting cops that kill unarmed innocent people how long are y'all going to keep that going? How long are y'all going to have prosecutors that are intimidated by unions not stand up for the union? How long are you going to have bogus politicians come around threatening people? If I had said what Trump said, they would be calling for me to be charged with inciting violence. If I had threatened people, that wanted to protest me coming, they would have come after me. But we're not going to be as low as you, Mr. President. We're going to show you what true decency and dignity and self-pride is. We're not violent. We are fighting violence. We don't kill unarmed people. We're not the ones that have done the deed. Look at this crowd, it's diverse. We're not anti-white, we're anti-wrong. And since you didn't know Juneteenth, maybe you didn't know, Mr. President, there were whites in the civil rights movement. Goodman, Cheney, and Swerner died to get us to write the vote. 
two Jews and a black. We never marched alone. And we're not alone now. And we won't be alone in three or four months when it's election time because our vote is going to speak for us. So let me say this. I wanted to come. One of the big supporters of NAN said, I'm going to fly you down and back. They said it was threats. I don't care about threats because we all are under threat until we get law that is orderly for everybody. But let me tell you this in closing as a minister. There was a big giant that huffed and puffed in the Bible. His name was Goliath. And Goliath sold wolf tickets. He came down with his big sword and his breastplate. And he said, who is it that will fight me? Who is it that can stand up against this giant? Who is it that think they can stand against my might? And all of those that were trained in fighting, all of those trained in warfare, was afraid of Goliath. But a little boy, never been to military school, never had war training, never was trained in warfare at all. He stepped up and said, let me fight the giant. That's what you see in all over America, Mr. President. Folk that didn't go to political science class, folks that don't have media analysts, folks that don't have spin doctors, saying if y'all are afraid, let me fight this giant. But they're not going to fight you the way you want. They said, give him an armor, give him a sword. They said, no, I don't need all of that. All I need is a slingshot. Because you can't beat this giant using his tools. Using violence is using his tools. Using rank and hatred is using his tools. We come to Tulsa to say, we got a slingshot. And five smooth stones, stones of justice, stones of peace, stones of diversity, stones of health care for everybody, stones for a criminal justice system that fair. We got a slingshot and we're going to take this giant down. I don't care how big you think you are. I don't care how strong you look. We're going to take this giant down and justice will flow like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. No justice, no justice, no justice, no justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. No justice. Thank you, God bless.